Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute. You're watching Devil's Advocate. Thanks for joining us. A little later on in the program, a one-on-one -on -one with Jake Jabs of American Furniture Warehouse. You grew up with him, you know him, and now he's going to talk about not only surviving bad times, but also a little, well, corporate welfare, working, working on the other side of the street. But first, Jay Ambrose, who was with, he used to be with Scripps Howard for, for so many years, sending your work to, what, 400 newspapers? Oh, I'm sending, yeah, my column goes to 400 newspapers, right. And so, I was with Scripps Howard for 20-something years. Boy, you... Got out just in the nick Here, of time, Rocky right? Rocky Mountain News yeah. and Scripps Hard in D.C. and in El Paso, so great. I wanted to talk to you about, since you work on more national issues uh, for, for your work, you did a piece recently about, well, the worst state in the world. Uh, Texas, <laughs> and you said nice things about Texas. Now you live here in Colorado, which means you have a certain alliance here. You must, you must put Colorado first before Texas. But I'm getting the feeling well, you're you're starting to become a big Texas there, fan. There, there, there's a lot of bigotry about Texas all over the world. I think, <laughs> or all over the United States, and I don't. I mean, bigotry in a soft way. Be best, uh, best uh, one. By, before you do that, best one. When I was a kid, I remember Governor Dick Lamb made a joke in Texas in front of the Texas governor. He's, he was there at some something. He said, you know, we're so grateful that so many great Texans come up to Colorado and, and ski and spend their money. But we, uh, the other week we had one who, who was, well, rather large, and he died on the slopes of a, of a heart attack. And, and this Texan was so big, we, we couldn't find a casket large enough to ship him home. And so we gave him an enema and sent him home in a shoebox. <laughs> <laughs> and Dick Lamb did this in, in Texas. Texas. Did right. he get away with it? Well, I asked him about did it later. He was like, uh, with no bones broken? <laughs> he, uh, I asked him on this show, did, did you really do that? And he, he sheepishly said, yeah, yeah I did Actually, that. I worked in El Paso for five years. Some people don't think that's really Texas. It's more New Mexico or Mexico or something. But I loved it, and I also love Austin, and I love San Antonio, and I think it's a terrific state. So I, I'm very fond of Texas, but beyond that, it's a state that does things right. Tell me, what do you mean uh, it does things right? It uh, has no income tax, one of a relatively few number of states that don't. It has low corporate taxes. Uh, many states have very high corporate taxes that we're going to talk right. about in a minute, right? Uh, it has a, a right to work law, which means that you can't be required to join a union to get a job and then have your dues coercively taken from you uh, by the government, by, uh, through a government law, uh, by the union, but through government uh, coercion. Uh, it's a state that business people therefore love. It's a state that, because of all of that and more, light, relatively light regulation, not making a fetish of environmental rules, even though they take care of their environment down there and do a pretty good job of it, but they don't make a fetish of it like some places do. But it's do. Texas. They don't, say, they don't say we're not going to drill for oil like they do in California. They drill for oil. And as a consequence of all of this, they attracted more, they attracted 70 percent of all new jobs created in 2008 in the whole United States, uh, 70 let's, let's percent. Let me see if I got this. So, so this backwater country of Texas, mm. uh, 70 percent of all new jobs happened in that state. In, I, 2008. in 2008. I had heard that in the last census that their population centers grew so much that, that they got, what, four new congressional districts? Their, exactly. Their population is growing, while in some other states we could mention, such as uh, uh, New York, uh, their population is decreasing. You know, one of the things that the liberals like to say, Paul Krugman, for instance, he said, well, listen, their unemployment rate is about as high as that in New York. Well, yeah, when you take in, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of new people, and New York's losing thousands and thousands and thousands of people, uh, you might have an equivalent in unemployment rate, but there's a world of difference in what's happening. They created, over the last decade, 730,000 jobs in Texas. 730,000 jobs. Be, be more, be One more specific. Be more specific. All right. Is it just because they don't have uh, uh, income tax? Now, they have property tax. That's where they make their money. Is it just because they have lower uh, uh, corporate taxes? Is it just because they have right to work? Is that, is that it? Is that the triad that we need? You, you, there are always uh, uh, issues beyond that in, in this sort of thing. You know, there, there, there can be, ha, there can always be other issues. We're going to talk about California in a minute. Uh, you know, California may be having problems for some reasons beyond just, uh, just their governmental policies. But the governmental policies are the heart of it. There's something called 
chief executive magazine that does a regular poll of business leaders of what state they most respect, of what state they most want to go to. And over and over again, they say Texas. And yes, the taxes and the regulations have a lot to do with it. T businesses like to be able to make a profit. If you tax it's them too dirty, much. Dirty, dirty, oh, dirty well, I word. Know it, I know it, I know it. I mean, it's hated by some people in this country. I mean, there are people I've met who just profit, profit. Oh my goodness, we can't. You know, it dictates a lot of policy in the United States of America is people who do not respect profits. They don't like profits. But also, and in Texas, when, when a, they do. When a business relocates, they need to have a very long term point of view because you're putting in a factory, you're putting in warehouses, you're putting in stores, you're hiring people. This is not just, you know, one guy guy moving his law practice down to Texas, this is moving a lot down. So you need to be certain that those policies are not fickle, that it's going to change from this year to the next year. And you think that Texas has you made have that. Had, you have had a solid decade of economic growth down there. Uh, and, and, it is, and, I, and I think people do trust Texas politics. There's always a lot of pressure uh, for them to uh, do things differently. There are people who will say, well, uh, their, their services are, are not as good as elsewhere. Can we make the California? Are you ready to go to California for a minute? Yeah. California, Let's go to California. California taxes has the second highest corporate tax, second highest uh, personal income tax in the United States of America. Uh, it has high corporate taxes. It, uh, you, can you give me some percentages? It, it regulates. It regulates. Uh, no, I, I, right now I can't think of, of, uh, of what their percentages are, but it is the second highest. And when when you uh, it might come to me in a minute, but when when you uh, when you do that. People don't like it, and businesses move out, and businesses are fleeing California, well, the and they're going to places like Texas, and the they're going to Texas The drugs. environmental regulations in California alone make it almost impossible to do business. Some you people don't, you think don't have California could be drilling as much oil right now as Texas is if they would drill offshore, but they think it's ugly, so they don't. Uh, it's not a danger, not, not in shallow waters, you know, but they don't want to, and so, you know, they think it's ugly, and they don't want to do it. They don't want to mess up their shoreline, so they have to pay enormous fees for utilities. Okay, that's their decision. But the people, you would say the people like it. People have always gone to uh, California in hordes. Now people are fleeing California in hordes because they don't have work there. They can't make money there. Uh, the, and those costs, the poor are those blamed, costs the poor do. Can't find jobs those there. costs <laughs> do affect us here because when they can't make enough power in California, they suck it out of places like Colorado. That's right. Our natural gas prices went up a couple of years ago because they completed a pipeline that sent it to California. Right. It's not. It's, it's not a surprise. All right. What do we need to do here in Colorado? to be, oh, I, that just, it hurts to say this, you understand, I grew up in Colorado, to be more like t Texas. Well, I, my, my, boy, what I like to think about is what do we need to do nationally? Because we have a national, we right now have an unemployment figure. Uh, and, I, and I'll, you know, Colorado, I'd say Colorado, just take note of what they've done in Texas and do, do exactly the same thing, okay? Uh, <laughs> do them one better, do them two better. Right. Then watch yourself grow, watch yourself grow. Right. I mean, you know, California faced uh, a, a deficit uh, uh, this year of, of uh, billions and billions and billions of dollars. And you know what they did? They cut it. They cut it. They didn't raise taxes to meet it. They cut it. And their, and their services are as good as they are in California. Uh, they're, they're, it's not great. You know, I mean, their education isn't terrific, but on national tests, they come in over uh, California. Uh, it, California is looking at uh, having to let people out of prisons now because the Supreme Court says you're not, well, in Texas, it's cruel. Texas, they uh, don't worry about it. They just kill you when you're in prison. That's right. It's not, not a big right. deal. <laughs> so you, you <laughs> just, but I mean, every, every. Uh, See, there's that bigotry again. What you know? bigotry? Texas are wonderful. Come on. Five, I'm, five years in Texas. I consider yeah. myself a part Texan. Watch, no, your, you, watch you, your tongue. Watch you're, your tongue. You're happy because. I you, have some big belt buckles yeah. at home, too. You, didn't, you watch out. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't get killed for jaywalking. You know, That's you know, why you like Texas. I'm one of those guys, big, big hat, few cattle, you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know. And, and uh, by the way, this is one of the reasons that Rick Perry, governor of Texas, is thinking about making, making the run. He's, he's thinking about be going, going for it because Texas has been where the growth is. Texas has been where the where employment has been. 
four new, uh, it is four new congressional seats, I think. I mean, no other state got four new congressional seats. That says there is growth there. Oh, absolutely. So, so uh, he, he's going to run. You're going you're gonna to vote for your Texan? Oh, I don't know. Are you I a don't Texan? really know enough about him, but I, I don't like his successionist talk, and so there's some things, you I know. love his successionist talk. I, 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 I think in a country that went through the terrible, terrible civil war we went through once, it, I, don't, I don't find a lot of... Well, lot hang on, hang on, hang on. That. The, the Texas... <laughs> the Texas... The agree, whoa, 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 whoa. The, right. the, the Texas right. agreement with the United States was that it could succeed. <laughs> it could leave. Now, unlike any other state, it has two things. Right. It has the ability to break into okay. five states okay. anytime it wants to, and it has the permission to leave without a civil war. Okay. I don't kind of like that. <laughs> I have a feeling that if they tried it, you would have some, some real difficulties. Uh, <laughs> Not if the Texans stay there. All right. So I, I, need, to, I need to know oh, this. Yeah. Yeah, the no, Broncos but, play the Cowboys. Oh. And you root. Oh, no, I troop for the Broncos. No, All no, right. I'm, I'm more Colorado than I am Texan. And, you know, and I'm also all Kentuckian by, uh, you know, native of Kentucky. And I have some more. They did, too. Talk to me. We have a couple minutes left. You've done uh, a, a piece recently on, on a lot of the uh, regulation that's going on in, uh, in the United States and that the regulatory state has just taken a magnificent jump, jump upward. Where are we? Oh my goodness, are you kidding? I'm not we're, kidding. We're, 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 there is the U.S. Uh, code, which is all laws and regulation, and it's hundreds of thousands of pages long. It's going to be, the Obama administration added another 100,000. I think we're up to 400 and some thousand pages. We regulate, we have more laws than any nation in the history of the world and any nation now. And I'm including the Soviet Union and anything, any conglomeration of nations you want to talk about. There is no one that does more. I mean, now, I'm not saying that we regulate in the same fashion that Soviet are you, are you, Union Are you did. talking about just federal regulation? Or are you I'm talking, talking about, about federal. I'm talking about the U.S. code. I'm talking about federal regulation. Not just the regulations, but all the laws. You put it all together, and it's unbelievable. And, you know, there are answers to this, by the way. I mean, I, I believe, and I, it would be difficult, but I believe in regular reviews of all laws. What we do is every time we pass a law, we ought to kill one. We ought to do that for starters. Uh, you ought to replace laws inst instead of just adding to them. But I think all laws ought to be reviewed uh, on a regular basis. Now, you know, there's so many now to review that I don't know exactly what the logistics would be of, of doing this. It'd have to be difficult, and, and Congress has a lot to do. I'll, but, I'll add one more on those. I think we need to begin to do that. You know, for, for the federal level, here in Colorado, we have over 3,000 separate governments and special districts. All of those have their own regulatory state as well. Oh, it's yeah. amazing anything gets done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, I'm in a place where we want to build a barn where, uh, you know, a communal barn where there'd been one for 50 years, and, and it turned out that it wasn't uh, zoned for a barn, even though that's all that had been on those 50 acres forever and ever. And so we went through a month and a half of getting Jefferson County to rezone. I mean, it's absurd. Beautiful. Excuse me. I hope I didn't. No, it's all right. <laughs> I'm going to let you go they back to Texas. They might come after me. Jefferson County might come after me. All Who right. They have a great I Texas lover. <laughs> Jay Ambrose, thank you. Coming up next, right. J uh, Jake Jabs joins me. It's going to be great. Stay with me.